Okay. So hello, uh, hello everyone again. And uh, as I said, we're going to discuss uh, how to approach any patient who refuse any kind of uh, management, including admission to the hospital, uh, certain treatment, medication, or investigation or procedure, whatever is happening. Uh, so we have a couple of stations in Bilabdu, and in the real life, you face a billion of these cases. And also, uh, we will touch a little bit in uh, how to convince someone to, because it's very similar in the approach, so we're going to take them together as well, how to approach someone who, you, if you want to convince someone to quit smoking or quit taking drugs, so because there is some similarities, so I, I may talk a little bit about that in this session as well. So we'll start with Selena. And thank you so much, Selena, because I know it's not easy to record yourself sometimes. Thank you for <laughs> accepting it's okay. that. <laughs> thank you for giving me the chance. Yeah, my pleasure. OK, so let's do our case. And I will give feedback in the end. And I will speak in general how to approach Okay. Yes, yeah. So your case is a um, 50 years old man has been ad has been admitted to the hospital uh, because of uh, stroke and mm -hmm. DVT. So uh, mm -hmm. he was uh, prescribed uh, warfarin and now he's due mm -hmm. to discharge. Everything fine with him. So um, he's due to this discharge, uh, but his main concern he refusing to take this warfarin. So he speak to uh, to the patient and address his concern. Okay. All right. So without so uh, patient patient yeah. was admitted in the hospital and was been diagnosed with stroke and DVT, right? Yeah, yeah. And okay. okay, in the history I will tell you more, but uh, okay. the, the aim of the station is to convince this man to take warfarin. And uh, okay. yeah, we will see. So he's just discharge management. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let's do it. No, there is not, I'm not going to put the timer, so take your time to tell me anything because we just, we need to practice our communication skills. So speak, don't panic with the time, speak as much as you can to convince me. Just, I need communication skills, okay? Okay. All right. When you are ready, start. His name yeah. is John. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, start with this. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. I'm Dr. Afro Happy, one of the junior doctors from this department. May I uh, confirm your name and age, please? Uh, yes, my name is John. Um, okay. 50, yeah. Okay, John, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, doctor. Uh, well, John, John, I can see that you are about to be discharged from the hospital. How are you feeling now? Yeah, I'm feeling great, doctor. I can't wait for it. Can you discharge me? Yeah. Now, yeah. I can see that you are very glad and we are also very happy uh, that you, you have been improved a lot. Oh, okay. So, John, I can see that uh, you have a concern. So, I have been asked to come to you regarding your concern. May I know, actually, uh, what is your concern at this moment? Well, um... Doctor, just yes, yeah, I was prescribed this warfarin and I don't want to take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So may I know exactly if there is any reason why you are not willing to take this medication? Uh, sorry, I, I, I didn't get your questions. Uh, may I know? May I know why you, you are not willing to take the medication? Oh, doctor, you know, this is the rat poisoning. Why you want to kill me, doctors? Okay, uh, so can you please tell me where did you uh, found this? Where did you find this? Uh, this is a rat poison? Uh, yes, uh, I read about it. I know they use this kind of medication. Uh, well, uh, John, uh, so I, I would like to clear you, uh, sometimes everything written in the website or in the internet that is not true. So this is not a rat poison, rather it is a, a blood thinner medication that will help you to prevent, uh, prevent stroke or clot formation. 
Oh, all right. Yeah. Or oh, anyway, okay. I don't want to take it, okay. doctor, even if it's not right poisoning. Uh, oh, well, I understand your concerns. Just before that, I would like to ask a few questions so that I'll be in better position uh, and I, I can help you in this regard. All right? Yes, please. Okay. So do you have any uh, chest pain or any heart tracing so far? Uh, no. All right. Do you have any shortness of breath? No. Okay. And uh, do you have any uh, feeling of dizziness? or light, lightheadedness? Uh, no. All right. Uh, do you have any cuff muscle pain? No. All right. So how are you feeling now? Like, uh, do you have any symptoms uh, that you, you were having previously? No, doctor, I don't have, doctor. Yes, I need to go home. Can I go home? Okay, that's very good, uh, John. And so, uh, John, do you know uh, why why this uh, medication has been prescribed to you? Yes, I know it's um, mm -hmm. for the blots I had, and it okay. it makes my blood thin, and that's why I'm scared mm -hmm. to get bleeding. Uh, yes, you are right, John. It is for uh, preventing your clot. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, one of the complications of warfarin is uh, bleeding. Uh, but uh, I, I would like to assure you that we will uh, monitor your blood uh, regularly and we'll check your INR. That is one of the measures for checking how your blood is thin. Uh, okay. So doctor, and, uh, by, you know, uh, following up this, we will uh, we'll make sure that. Yeah, I know, I know what you're going to tell me because I, I know a lot about this warfarin and my father, uh, he was uh, treated with warfarin as well and he died from it. He got a severe bleeding in his brain because of the warfarin. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm uh -huh. suspecting like, uh, I'm sure that he was managing, monitoring him as well, but why could he have this complication? So it means it's very risky. I'm not going to take this risk. I'm really sorry about your uh, loss of your father. Uh, actually, uh, if uh, this is uh, one of the complications of warfarin is bleeding, but we'll make sure that and we will uh, follow up everything and we will adjust the dose so that we can uh, we can be warned about uh, about how thin is your blood and according to that we can uh, reduce your dose as well. All right. And uh, in terms of uh, taking this medication, if you are not taking this, you will have another stroke. And you know, John, that that will be uh, something uh, very dangerous at, at some extent. Oh, anyway, I'm alive now, but if I take the warfarin, mm -hmm. I may not stay alive, you know. Uh, don't worry, John. We are here, we will take care of you and we will make sure that nothing is going wrong with you, all right? And are you, you know- No, no, sorry, sorry, doctor. Like, are you sure I'm not going to uh, get any more bleeding? Uh, John, I can uh, I, I can assure you that we will uh, keep you in follow up so that this is not going to be happen. And if it is happening, uh, we will uh, uh, there is treatment and uh, we can uh, we can early we can um, we, we can handle that situation. But uh, if you are not taking this medication, if you are getting another stroke, so that uh, that time you won't recover early. Uh, maybe you you will uh, feel you will uh, uh, you will suffer for a long time. So, like you saying, doctor, like uh, you're going to handle the situation if I got bleeding. So, why you didn't handle the situation yes. in my father's uh, case? Uh, actually, sometimes things are not in our hand. So probably he was not uh, taking medications regularly or he's uh, no, 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 he he, was taking he, everything regularly. Doctor, please don't assume anything. He was taking okay. everything regularly and he got this bleeding. Okay, maybe he was brought to the hospital uh, not in early state so that we, was, we were not uh, able to manage that. But in your situation, we can... Uh, I'm assuring that uh, we will keep you in follow up and uh, time to time when you will uh, like uh, when your INR level will be reduced, we will adjust the medication accordingly. All right, doctor. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet. 
So it's really hard decision, you know, I can't make it that fast. Uh, okay, uh, John, if I'm giving you one hour and you, you just uh, think a uh, second time about taking this medication or you can discuss with your, your some friends or your close one so that uh, you can change your mind. How about this? Thank you for giving me one hour. What do you think one hour is going to change my mind? I'm not, I, I don't think so. Uh, well, John, you are uh, you you have all the right to take decision which medication you will take and which treatment you will take. But uh, we uh, we think about your safety. If at any point you feel that uh, you are uh, not like, if at any point you feel that you will take this medication, you come back to us. We will prescribe accordingly. All right, John. Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay, okay, so Dr. now you spoke about you're going to do uh, lots of measures to handle, um, to prevent this bleeding happening. So you've spoken yeah, about yeah. this uh, uh, INR test, but what else, yeah. is there anything else you're going to do to prevent it from happening to me? Uh, yes, we will provide you one card that is red card. So you will carry this card uh, with you. And whenever uh, you will go to any health service uh, service and uh, dentist or uh, your pharmacist, you will show this card and they will get to know that you are taking warfarin so that uh, anything or any medication that is going to uh, interact with this, they will consider about that. And also they will take care, care of you strictly, all right? Okay. Yeah. Fine. Okay. How does it sound? Yeah, it's fine. Is there anything else? Um, no. Uh, so uh, I, I hope that you are taking this medication, isn't it, John? No, not taking it. But thank you for your time, doctor. Okay, John. Wish your best luck. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Uh, very well done, Selena. Yeah, it was excellent. Uh, and you covered most of the thing I was expecting from you. However, again, you didn't, you, you just, you asked me a little bit, you like, as I was telling you always, everything you want to tell, all this medical information, take it from the patient head. Let them okay. process it in their head. It will, it, it's more effective. And this is what I have been studying over the past week. Just if you want mm -hmm. to convince anyone to do something, just um, mm -hmm. let them to process the information in their head. Like draw all the, because uh, in this country, uh, uh, patient, uh, most patients are very educated and especially if they know the disease, they will Google it and they will know a lot about it. So just ask, if, instead of telling all this great information you mentioned, let the patient tell you some of them so they can process uh, the, the, the decision in their head, they can reach their own conclusion without pushing them. So the ideal is not to push the patient to, to take any decision. And, and you didn't push me, but you're trying to impose me with billions of information, which are um, obviously completely reluctant to do. So, so the idea is just try to draw out all the individual thoughts, like uh, ask them, for example, do you know, what if you didn't take this? So you told me the answer, but you asked the patient the questions. Do you know if you didn't take this um, warfarin, uh, what is going to happen to you? So instead of telling me, if you didn't take the warfarin, you're going to develop um, another stroke, which is going to be disabling to you, ask, ask, ask him, uh, do you have any idea or did you give it any thought what is going to happen if you didn't take your medication? So let the patient, uh, be confronted by their own thoughts. Uh, I don't know, doctor, I may have another stroke. And how would you feel about it? Just, just always keep asking the patient, let them process the information and, and, and reach the final decision by themselves. So everything you want to say, let the patient say them. But the, the measures, uh, what you told about INR, warfarin clinics and drug interactions, and also you forget about interaction with food. So all this and, and a record book and alert card, all this you need to give it to the patient because the patient is not aware about. So it's, it's absolutely fine part of the management. But when you're discussing with the patient, the, the cons and pros of, of not having warfarin, let the patient tell you this, ask them, do you, do you have an idea what, what is um, 
disadvantages of not taking the warfarin and uh, uh, have you ever given it a thought if you took the warfarin um, how better your life will be instead of thinking about the side effects how good is your life will be if like to prevent you from having another stroke and I'm sure that you don't want even if uh, uh, the second stroke is worse but even if you had the similar stroke I know it's not unpleasant uh, experience to come to the hospital, uh, isn't it? So just try to explore it from the patient point of view and drag them to reach their own conclusion. But everything you 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 covered in the session it was uh, really great, and I think you did lots of good things there. And um, regarding uh, embassy and sympathy, so I think you didn't show me that much today. You just said sorry for your father, but I'm not sure about others. So just acknowledge the patient feeling, tell, tell him, I can see um, how this, uh, for example, I told you it is very hard decision. I can see uh, it's really difficult moment for you. And uh, please uh, take your time. There is no rush at all, something like this. So. Uh, whatever the patient telling you, think about uh, reflecting that back to the patient and offer um, support at the same time in the same sentence. Like if you said, I can see this is difficult for you, uh, let me reassure you, for example, uh, I'll do my best to make you make the right decision or I will do my best uh, not to force you to do anything that you don't like. I just I'm, I'm, I'm explaining things for you and it's all up to you. So something like this, yeah. But throughout the session, you need to give some more of these sentences. All right, Selena. Okay, and in each Bilab uh, 2 station, uh, try to explore the patient ideas like eyes. Uh, uh, try to explore the patient uh, ideas, concern, and expectations. And it shouldn't be one sentence like, um, did you, like the one we know all of us, like we learned by heart, like, for example, uh, did you give it any thought, what could be causing your problem? And then you stop here. So when you um, try to uh, assess patient concern, ideas, and expectations, try to take it in depth, ask the patient more questions regarding this area, like, uh, for example, uh, what were what was you expecting from us to do for uh, for you today, or what were you having we would do for you today? Uh, when he tell you something, explore it and also ask, is there anything else? So always try to emphasize in these three areas as well. So someone asking in the chat, please everyone write a question for me regarding this station in the chat. I will be more than happy to answer how to address that um, rat poisoning point. Yeah, so it is, it is, it's used for rat poisoning um, in high dose, it's di different, but we will tell uh, the one that uh, you use for rat poisoning is totally dif different. So this one is um, tested uh, rigorously uh, on labs and in human being, and it didn't poison anyone at all. So please let me reassure you, uh, it, 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 it will not poison you at all. It's nothing to deal with that and is, is, is being tested um, rigorously, as I said. But uh, the valid point he's making regarding bleeding, so we'll tell him your, your uh, point regarding this having bleeding is extremely valid. And you know what? Your concern is our concern. So what we're going to do, we have lots of measures to, to prevent this from uh, bleeding from happening. Would you like me to discuss them with you or not? So you have to make it like this. Do we need to check mental capacity? Yes, so any patient refusing treatment, we have to uh, check uh, mental capacity. Uh, so thank you for this point. So just ask, but it, it shouldn't be like uh, certain things you check in mental capacity. So when you ask the patient questions and they're replying back to you and they're processing the information you're saying, and taking the whole uh, conversation with you in a very logical way, 
they have mental capacity, so you don't need to worry about that. It will come as natural. Like if you uh, like you followed my just uh, very important advice regarding take everything from the patient head, don't impose it on them. You will obviously you will know everything about the patient, how the patient thinks his mental capacity because you're asking them and they replying back to you. Yeah, so you indirectly get their mental capacity already. Any more question? Please, if you if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, please repeat how to ask uh, the mental capacity here. So here you don't need to, uh, in general, we ask mental capacity by, ask, by, by telling the patient the information or first start by question. If you want to give any information, ask them question. For example, do you, do you have an idea what is going to happen if you didn't uh, take this warfarin? And when they tell you, uh, uh, if they don't know, if they tell you the answer, so obviously they have mental capacity if, if it's logical answers. And have you ever thought about the consequences of not having this? Or, or for example, uh, if uh, this is stroke, like, do, do you know how the implication of this, uh, your decision, like uh, someone asking, asking about implication? Yeah, so implication is the same question I'm asking now. So uh, what is going to happen if you didn't do this? So this is the implication of your actions. And they, they are able, if the patient has mental uh, um, uh, problems, so we will make sure that they are able to retain the information. So you will give them the answer and ask them again, can you please summarize what I have said, just to make sure I, I, I got everything correct here or I, I explain myself clear to you. So by this, you checking their mental capacity. So the patient has to be able to uh, answer your questions uh, logically throughout the consultation. And also they have to be able to uh, retain, to they, they know what is the implication of their decision and they can retain the information you're giving them and they know, uh, for example, uh, they can make a logical decision, like can share decision from all the discussion. So just we'll ask, can you please repeat what I have said so far? But obviously, like if the patient answering you all the logical questions and throughout the station, you asking them instead of imposing question on them, you asking them, uh, what do you think if you didn't take the medication is going to happen for you? And have you ever thought about if you take the medication, uh, what good, what benefits you gain to gain, you gain to gain from taking this warfarin? So when you're asking this question and they're answering you correct answer, those people, they have mental capacity, you don't need to worry about that. In the someone asking, please ask, uh, read the talk first. Uh, I was in word, uh, can you uh, repeat? So repeat repetition, uh, I'm going to send the recording, don't worry about that. Uh, in the beginning, can we say how was your stay in hospital? Yes, so this is very good point. I wrote down for Selena, I forgot to tell you. So there is no need to go into depth about um, the history and what happened in the hospital. Brief history, like uh, why you are admitted and you can ask a little bit of past medical history because you're going to use it in, in um, in convincing him somehow. So you can ask your past medical history because if he has previous stroke, uh, now uh, if he didn't take the uh, warfarin, uh, the third attack will be extremely devastating. So he could have bleeding. So you need to use it to convince him as well. But we don't need to go into depth the same like uh, medic like um, any other history based station. Don't go into depth in the history like symptoms and these things. Just uh, uh, the reason for admission uh, why you admit it, and how are you now? Do you have any symptom at all? General question, but don't go into depth uh, specific symptoms. Uh, any symptoms at all? 
And uh, can you just, I need to ask you a few background about your past medical history, if you don't mind, just to have a quick, um, uh, to learn quickly about your situation. So uh, has it ever happened before, this is drug? And how has your health been recently, apart from what you told me? Uh, are you taking any medications? Because if he taking medications that would interact with warfarin, you need to tell him, for example, if he taking aspirin, you need to tell him, I'm going to speak to my consultant because this medication uh, is, they shouldn't be prescribed together. So you need to make sure he's not taking any, any medication, any allergy, family history, you can ask quickly and that's it. All right, so any question? So uh, someone asking, um, do we need to ask like, are you satisfied with the treatment provided? No, is this station no need at all? So it's, it's awkward question. So uh, just we ask this to the relatives if we if, when we want to talk about policies and these things, just to build a robot with them. But this patient, you, you already know as a doctor, you did your best for him. So just, it's fine. You don't need to touch this point, I guess. In the real life, we don't do that. Okay, any question? Please write in the chat. Uh, 